Welcome, everybody, back to the Ringside Beer Show. I am Alex. This is my co-host, Jason. Jason. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Thank What's you for on, uh, you know clicking our video and uh, tuning back in. Tuning back in, guys. This is the ninth episode, and we yes. just want to say this is all due to you guys, man. You guys are participating. You're tuning in. You're uh, loving the content that we have here, guys. So we oh, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, here goes another one. Yeah, let's go, man. So we do have a giveaway, and we have an, a winner to announce. But we're going to save that at the end of the episode. So uh, tune you know, you in, gotta, guys. <laughs> you got to <laughs> save the best for last. Yes, yes. And then we're going to announce it on Instagram, and we're going to make a post about yes. it. Yes. And we're going to upload this tonight. So it's all good. Yep. Um, so excited. So exciting, man. First giveaway, man. Yeah, That's it's it. the first giveaway. First of many. And uh, I think the most important thing is um, this is going to the fans that have been riding with us since day one. So we appreciate it, and we are very thankful to be able to reward you. Yeah. Also... I'm glad we made it the winner, dude. Can you imagine if he would have lost? Yeah, that'd be a tough one, man. That'd be a tough one. But, you know, it's champ stuff only around here. So So the next one, well, the next one, hopefully we'll have two paintings. We'll see. I can't wait to get into the fight because this guy right here, he's going to be holding the belt for a long time. Oh, man. Well, that's, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. We'll just hop into current events and then we'll go into the fight recap. Let's get into a little bit of current events. So. Oh my God! Talk about Conor McGregor making news this this past weekend and this week, man. We just want to uh, welcome you guys to the Conor McGregor show because <laughs> uh, the next couple of minutes is going to be strictly dedicated to old straight boy. Conor. So not only that, we got Conor Pacquiao. That was the big thing that got announced. That yes, it was, and that was right before the fight. Yeah, that was revealed Friday afternoon on Twitter that he's boxing Manny Pacquiao next in the Middle East. Yeah, and. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I I don't know. I don't know what's going to so happen. Let me, let me ask you this. <laughs> ask away, bro. I'm let just... me ask you this. Do you do you feel the same way that you felt when Connor fought Floyd Mayweather? Is this giving you the same type of same type of juice? Same type of vibe? Same type of no? So the Floyd fight, I we knew. I well, me personally, I knew what it was about. It was about a money fight. It's our best, our big, you know, our biggest name in combat sports history, you know, in MMA, and then you have the biggest name in boxing, you know, right. the money right. man. So it was a money fight. Funny thing, I was the one who put the type. Anyways, we'll go on there. I put the no, name. You guys can go back to the previous episodes. Yeah. We touched on that very intricately. Yeah. So. uh yeah, I that one had a buzz. It was more of a like an event. Like, yes, I, me personally, I was like, oh, you know, May was probably going to win that one, hands you hands know, down, hands down. But uh, it was more of like, hey, I just want to in- attend this event. It's bigger than life. It's going to be, you know, we're never going to get this again. Yeah, I think it was definitely a money fight. Like, hey, exactly, you know, our best, your best. The timing's right. Stars aligned. Had a little motivation, a little social media push behind it. Exactly, and it was it was it was cool because you get both sides of the the combat sports. You get boxing and MMA, right? And uh, it was just it was fun to be there. We were both there. I we mean, were there, we were at, the at least con- at the press conference. Exactly. So it was with the it, FU suit. <laughs> oh yeah, the LA. Yeah, that was and nuts. It was cool meeting the media, and it was just it was such a different. Thing it wasn't a regular fight. It wasn't even like fight. Uh, what do you call it? international fight week? It wasn't like that. No. It was his own spectacle on its own. So yeah. this does not have the same feel to it. And right. maybe because I feel like Pacquiao is gonna put every hand, the hamburger helper hand, the freaking all state <laughs> hand on Conor McGregor's <laughs> face, bro. I'm just saying he's gonna put all the hands on him. And I'm like, I don't want to see that. That is. That's gonna be a brutal fight. I mean, because Pacquiao, yeah, man, Pacquiao's gonna go after him. He's not like Mayweather, where he's gonna like slip and you know give you a couple rounds and read you, right? I think this does work a little bit into Conor McGregor's favor, though. You want, as Conor McGregor, you want somebody that's gonna be a little more aggressive in the boxing ring instead of somebody that's being a little more defensive, because instead of you chasing the shots, because we all know Conor gets gassed. Instead of you yes. chasing the shots, you know, you're, you can be a counter striker. That left could be a little more effective. You can then um, somewhat try to control the pace because you could be the aggressor at times. I think it benefits a little more stylistically for Conor McGregor. But it does not have that same type of oomph and nah. push, push behind it that, you know, Floyd versus Mayweather had. 
I'm sorry, Floyd versus McGregor had. Yeah. And I think that is the difference between these two fights. And this is where Connor needs to realize you could chase these money fights, man, but we're at a point about legacy for you. We we wanna we wanna we wanna see more for the legacy, and that means stepping back into the octagon. You can continue to do all these big money fights and set up your children's trust funds for yeah forever. But let's Stick to the, you know, yeah. to the actual legacy itself and get back into the MMA. Now, room. I would watch it, but I feel like I'm, I'm I'm about to watch in a butt whooping on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm This yeah. is, does not have like, oh, you know what, maybe because Florida wasn't a knockout artist, right? Right. Granted, Manny Pacquiao is a little bit older, but yo, if you put him with an, you know, like an amateur boxer. We oh, expect- oh we, we, there's going to be, there's levels to the game, dude. Pacquiao's yeah. still a top level boxer, so. 100%. I don't we know, ex- we expect we expect Floyd to be sitting there looking to duck shots, right? So that leaves him susceptible to taking a shot. That's why it was so intriguing, Connor versus Floyd. And big left, can he get out of the way? You know, that was the big question. And not only that, Floyd never like I mean, in his earlier boxing career, yes, he would push the pressure um, and move forward. But you know, towards the end, his end of his career, he was a more defensive fighter. Broke his hands so, too many times. So. The thing is, if Floyd was able to move forward with Connor and and do a and get a TKO in the tenth round, yeah. or a you know referee stoppage, whatever you want to call it, I'm just saying, um, Pacquiao's gonna get the KO. Pacquiao yeah. will get the KO. Yeah, I don't see it being any other way, honestly. Now, once again, this is fun. We're gonna watch it. We'll participate. Yeah. If we're being realism, like realistic, you know, being realism people type of people. God, man, I cannot talk today. What a horrible <laughs> time to be doing a podcast. If this is, if we're looking at the, you know, in the eyes of real reality, there we go. I honestly don't believe that this is even competitive. Um, uh, I think it does stylistically add up a little bit better for Connor in comparison to the Floyd fight, but I think both are not good for Connor. Hey, well, you know what? Maybe he wants the hands, dude. I, bro, you about, you're about to get all of them. I mean, you're going to get them. Dude, we're in the middle of a pandemic. You're about to get him Check straight it out. delivery from Amazon, signed by Check Manny Pacquiao, bro. In exchange for three hundred mil, all day. Oh, dude, I'll, all day. Dude, you give me three. You give me a. You give me one mil. I'll go in there with Pacquiao. True. Straight up. Oh, you, maybe that's what it is. I, I mean, a <laughs> mil. I'll do it for less, bro. Well, I don't know. I don't no. want to. I don't want to lower the bar, you know, because obviously we have a, a union going on here. You know? We want <laughs> we want to get ourselves paid, but I'll do it for less. Yeah, you give me a mill, I'll freaking hop in with whoever. And hundred thousand. And I know for a fact, I'd be like, no, guys, I'm just doing it for the money. I know I'm going to get knocked out, guys. Straight up. You guys hey, want to see someone get knocked out? You, got, a- you guys want to see a dead body? <laughs> 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 All right, well, what somebody got? Okay, so hero, and this is according to McGregor's manager Adi Atar, who also represents Pacquiao's. Um, Pacquiao, McGregor is in in serious talks to fight uh, the boxing legend. However, the fight isn't a done deal yet. Right. The uh, McGregor-Pacquiao match would take place in late December or early January, Atar said. Now, my boy here, Alex, came up with the hashtag name already, and I wish that you can uh, go and trademark it. Oh, we're going to sure they're already on it. Oh, yeah, they're going to. Well, I said for the Mayweather McGregor that was gonna be the money f- money fight, but this one's yes. gonna be Mac Pack, right? It's got to be Mac Pack. Mac Pack, baby. It's got to be the Mac it has Pack. A ring to it. It it's flush. It's smooth. Uh, OG, like is it OG smooth? It's I mean OG smooth. A, a certified? There's only it's <laughs> definitely certified, but I wouldn't say it's the OG smooth. <laughs> All right, good. But uh, following that, on Friday, he revealed McGregor's fighting Pacquiao. Revealed McGregor fighting Pacquiao in a boxing match was in fact one of the topics discussed. With the UFC, and according to Atar, the UFC was on board with the idea. Of course, they are. Yeah. Following the Pacquiao fight, Atar said the plan was for McGregor to return to the UFC in 2021. I'm sure that was pre-pandemic. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of tweets that have been going back and forth, and we're getting right into it because Dana was pissed at the oh, uh, yeah. after the post-fight press conference uh, this weekend um, that uh, he broke man code. Yeah, and. Did. I I mean there is yeah there is man code but I mean what Connor's saying is like hey man you you freaking lying so let's go right into it he said yeah. I'm still interested in a fight with uh with you somewhere down the line Diego Sanchez a true warrior and a pioneer of this sport it would be my honor some journalists and promoters and their lack of respect for uh what the fighters put into the game make me sick Things must change. This was what Connor said. Yeah, code was broken when you lied to me about 
when you lied to, about me turning down fights, mate. I said Justin and May, and you went in and said I did not want to fight. It's not about Diego. Diego was a filler to get more fights in. Also, you have been involved in Manny Talks. The legal letters are there. Stop lying. And that was directly towards Dana White. Now, he touched on Diego Sanchez, and I couldn't believe it. And, and this is what Dana always says. Like, come on, you're ranked number uh, two and three, and you want to fight someone that's unranked. And, you know. Yeah, he made a comment. And Diego um, Sanchez's fight this weekend was not even. Like, right. There's was, no testament to even making that fight a, a at all. reality. Like, no one wants to watch that fight. It was almost kind of insulting. And it made real, like, real hardcore fans look at Connor like, okay, so you were the kind of guy that would fight anybody, any place. Now it seems like you're literally per- chicky, cherry picking. <laughs> Peter Pot to pick a pepper pick. He's cherry picking, and he's looking for those easy money fights. And honestly, dude, like, I wouldn't turn it, turn, tune into that. That would make me kind of turn away. I'd be turned yeah. off. Yeah, I would take this photo off and probably put it on the other side of the wall so you guys can't see it. But yeah. <laughs> we, would re- we would replace it with something else. I'd petition for a John Jones. Yeah, so we'll see, man. But then <laughs> Justin Gaethje uh, replied to that. What did he say? Yeah, man. He said, uh, notorious MMA. Not a good look lying on the boss. Anything to not look like a bitch. You had me in January. I was calling on you left and right and not a peep. My manager asked if you wanted... If I wanted you after Tony, but you know, fuck you. You never. <laughs> <laughs> this is so fun. You never wanted it. You took the easy road, kid. I yeah. apologize, guys. This and that's is all from. For, but this is just. Uh, yeah, this is purely, Justin Gaethje. <laughs> I'm just reading off what the the uh, tweet said. This is purely for entertainment, guys. If you have children, please put them in the other room. <laughs> well, a little too late for that. <laughs> well, guys, we're talking about violence here, yeah. so. So, anyways, well, we got breaking. <laughs> we got some breaking news tweets that just popped off. What, like an hour ago? Yeah, man. Right when we were putting together the uh, the prep work for the show, yes. I'm like, "Hey, dude, did you catch this?" And uh, here's a little bit into it. Yes. Yeah, so. so Connor tweets, and this is December 12th. Um, in the point, Depot, this is what Island, he says. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no weigh-ins. Open way un uh, unified rules. I will arrange a travel fair for you and your family. McGregor Sports and Entertainment MMA, in association with the Good Fight uh, Foundation, Charity Mixed Martial Arts. And um, that was towards uh, Justin Gaethje, I believe. Uh, or, this not Justin to, Gaethje, this uh, was Dustin, a, Dustin Poirier. Poirier, yeah. So it looks like we might have mixed up the um, frame, oh, no. but... What well, is, these, these are both from Connor. Yes, these are both from Connor. And what it started off was uh, Connor replying to Dustin Poirier, Hey, bro, you want to do an MMA charity fight? Zero to do with the UFC. I will donate half a mil towards your charity for it, sell it on pay per view, or work out a TV deal, and we will work out each uh, other. We'll work out other charities that are close to my heart. Also, I am engaged in many. Strictly a charity exhibition, and I love the word that you brought up off air. Uh, he was, you know, that's kind of like lawyer lawyer talk. Yeah, man, it definitely seems like he was prepped by a lawyer or advised yeah. by a lawyer on certain verbiage to use because it's not a fight, which. If you're in the UFC contract deals, you cannot have a fight anywhere else. But if you have an exhibition, yeah, purely for charity, I think there's legal there's wiggle a, room in there's there. There's a wiggle room, a little almost like what do you call that? A little uh, loophole. Loophole. Now, yeah. now we don't provide legal advice. Let's just make that clear here, guys. But I mean, we definitely recommend to seek outside legal yes. advice. You can go to what is it, Mario uh, Law Offices? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure yeah, if, you right. Google, if you Google Mario Law Offices, you'll find one. Yeah, no, it does not <laughs> exist, guys. I was just joking. <laughs> Anyways, Dustin replies, "Yeah, let's go." Uh, Marquis Rules of Queensberry, or was it Marquis of Queensberry Mar- Rules? Marquis Rules Exhibition? Question mark. And mm-hmm. then Connor replied, "Excellent. We shall take it offline and progress the process from here." Good man, Dustin. I respect your philanthropic. The philanthropic efforts greatly, as well as how you conducted yourself post our first fight. You have my respect. Dustin replies, I'm in. Let's do it. A lot of people will benefit from this at Good Fight FDN. And I believe that's his charity. Yes, yeah, Good that's- Fight Foundation, which um, I'm a big fan of Dustin Poirier, man. And he does yeah. so many good things for that foundation. Let's make this happen, guys. Yo, Yo let's get Connor in something competitive but you know but not only this this opens up a whole new thing where it's like if he's a promoter connor is a promo- promoter obviously with mcgregor and entertainment right 
dude, this is a huge loophole where he's like, dude, I'm just piggybacking off the UFC name, getting your fighters, and I'm going to take every single one, and I'm going to make my own thing. I love and, it. And now we're, um, ooh, I don't, I'm waiting for Dana's response to this. Well, this really sounds like he was advised by a lawyer on the verbiage to use. Yeah. Now, you know, the whole scenario. But now I think Dana is now being advised by his lawyers on how to respond properly because I'm sure, you know, you have to at least seek some legal advice in a scenario like this when you have somebody who's contracted through your corporation. Yeah, but, I mean, dude, if if Connor is able to pull this off, there goes all the contracts for the UFC because they are super strict. Like, I'm yeah, telling you, man, man. They don't bend or fold. No, man. Uh, especially, look at it. So I was a key artist for the UFC for, I mean, like, I mean, 2017, 2018. And uh, do their contracts are like as is, dude. We're talking they're strict, man. You cannot talk to anybody about anything. You cannot release any leaks. Nothing. So yeah, they don't play. Yeah, they don't play. So, anyways, um, I'm excited to see what's Dana's response after you know our show right now. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be an interesting little storyline to see how uh, Dana handles one of the biggest UFC stars in all time history who's still under contract. Yeah. Who actually signed a new contract when he fought Cowboy right before. So we'll see, man. Yeah. Well, let's get a word from our sponsors, man. Ringside Beer. Let's go. Let's shout out Ringside Beer one time. Let's go. Ringside Beer, since 2012, committed to bringing fight fans, quality loggers, and ales. Brewed in Anaheim, California, Orlando, Florida, and Queensbury, New York. Ringside Beer is proud to offer fresh beer in both 16-ounce Cans and on draft, excuse me. Look for our flagship American style lager, American style red ale, or any of your other beers in your area. Shop at ringsidebeerstore.com for t shirts, hats, and tap handles. Get in touch at ringside beer store. Get in touch at ringsidebeer.com. Get in the ring. Be ringside. Ringside, ringside beer. beer. There we go, man. And remember, guys, the brand new MMA tap handles, the black ones just came out. So still. There's still a couple left for you guys. If oh, you want yeah. To come grab them, get so. on top of that. Get them while it's hot, man. They're hot right now. So yeah. get them. Yeah. All right. Only the coolest kids have them. And we got two right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's get into a little bit of the fight recaps. The recaps. UFC 253 this weekend. Yeah, oh, my so we're God. We're going to start it off with Car France <clears throat> versus Roy Vall. And this was a fight of the night. And, yeah. dude, it was it fight of the night, man. 100%. Ooh, I believe it's crazy because this card was a pretty good card. They had some really great fights. This right yes. here was fight of the night. This I thought this was the best fight of the the whole card. So, yeah. and they, I, they, I'm glad they gave him fight of the night because any of the other ones, I I mean the co main event and the main event, I wouldn't even call those fight of the nights. Yeah, I mean, no, they did. the The hype was not up to par. Yeah, well, good fights. Yeah, and I believe a Ro, was it Roy Val Roy Val. He came from. He was the former LFA champion. Yes, and and which is which is surprising because Kara was the favorite going into the fight. Yeah, he was. And um, I thought it was so interesting because I was like, dude, uh, watching the fight, you can see power versus uh, technical, a little bit more technical skill on a uh, Roy Val side. You know, I think that was just the um, the actual writing on the wall, the whole entire card. You had a lot of guys with power, but it seemed like precision was just beating power to the punch every single time. In every single fight, it seemed like just the precision was there, and it was outbeating the power strikers all night. Yeah. And that kind of had it had me feeling a little comfortable going into the, well, the main event. Well, the co-main event. <laughs> I was expecting we both got that one wrong. but uh, we'll We did. Go. So I was going off impulse on that one. It yeah. was definitely more of emotion because... Yeah. Dom Reyes is the the you know close local fighter. We wanted to see champion stuff around yeah. town, um, but honestly, when it came down to, it just seemed like John. Well, we can get yeah, we'll, we'll, save, we'll, we'll get save it. it. We just but, want to congratulate uh, Roy Val for his uh, you know awesome victory yes. performance of the night and win, dude. When he got dropped and landed the spinning elbow when he was coming back up and the dude was coming in. Yeah, and, man. And rock the other guy. Oh, he my was still God. In the fight. He was still in the fight. He dropped that nat. Just look at the picture right there. You can see it landed clean. And, and not only that, his when the car was moving forward and uh, Royal was back, he was picking up his left knee. Did you see that? Picking yeah. up the left knee and counting. I'm like, dude. 
oh my god, this was so good. It was such a good fight. Yeah, and they both kept pushing the pace, man. It was ooh. super aggressive. Yeah, and uh, he got it, I believe, in what, in the first or second with the submission? I think it was in the second. In the second. So, anyways, well, congratulations. Fight of the night. Great fight. Yeah, guys. And let's go right into co-main event, which is uh, Dominic Reyes versus John Blakovich. <laughs> yes. And okay, so this this is where I, where I wanted to get into it a little bit. Yeah. Now, like I was saying, precision, beaded, power, um, all night. In my eyes, this is how I perceived the co-main event. It seemed like Dominic Reyes was really trying to outpower John Blakovich and hit him with harder strikes, and it seemed more like John was landing more precision-type strikes that were landing stronger, if that really? makes sense. That's how I perceived it, because it, like, it seemed like John was... Although he's the more stronger fighter, he's the strong. It seemed like he was more oh. of like it was just more precision, man. Everything he was throwing that was landing. I have to say, Dom was trying to just overpower those shots. Well, that's how I perceived it. I believe the first round, and it's just funny because John called. It, he's like, "I'm gonna knock him out in the second round." Now the first round, let's just call a spade a spade. It was <laughs> boring, yeah, and because they were both trying to figure each other out, and right. I was, and I had a feeling too because I was like, "Man, this is gonna be either." they're all going to go all out or they're going to save their energy towards a later round. Yeah. And that's what exactly was happening in the first a round. <clears throat> a lot of respect in that first round. Now what happened in the second round, someone got punched in the face and all of a sudden it was like, okay, it's go time. I, the yeah. second, uh, John landed a punch on Dominic Reyes. I saw Dominic Reyes. I was like, all right, it's go time. We're going to start swinging now. Right. And I think that played into John's, um, you know, hand. Yeah, absolutely. Favorably. So, uh, and dang, I felt, I felt bad cause I, well, you know, because I was, yes, we are going for the California guy, you know, Reyes. And this, you know, from our previous episode, um, we, I had picked him. Right. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I did not see that coming whatsoever, man. I, think, I did not um, see that knockout at all. I think he did not, I think he did not realize the amount of strength that John has. He may have thought it was like a placebo thing or just like off for looks. Uh, but once his nose was broken, I mean, you can clearly see Dom got his nose broken. Oh, once he dude. got that, that shot to the face, man, it was almost like a panic mode or like, oh, man, this is this guy's strong. Yeah, the, he, he clearly was like, dude, he has way more power than John Jones. And uh, I thought it was funny that John called out John Jones at the end, man. Yeah, he did. John Jones, <laughs> where you at? And so he, uh, after his post fight, he says, "I, I have the legendary Polish power. I proven it one more time. Amazing." This is what he said after the fight. And John Jones said, <laughs> "You know, John is just sitting back, uh, tweeting away after all these fights." He said, "Would you guys be annoyed if I went back and grabbed my belt real quick?" <laughs> Yes, John, I'd be just a little annoyed. <laughs> Man, dude, Hall, you're a John Jones diehard fan. You're telling me you would not want John Jones to go back to the light heavyweight division, just snatch that belt up real quick, quick and fast? I Okay, I wouldn't have he a problem have... with him doing that. I think my problem is, why did you vacate then? To make it exciting, there, dude. Like now, you now we're excited to see this. Now we're excited because if it would have been like, oh, you know, I guess being the the John Jones fan that I am, I think it wasn't. It wasn't more exciting when he vacated the belt. I think it literally was probably the same amount as exciting because we all know whose belt that really is. That's that's Daddy's belt. And did that, you call? Did you just call John Jones Daddy? Bro, John bro. Jones. Okay, listen, John Jones. Hold John Jones is wait daddy, a minute. John Jones is Daddy of the light heavyweight <laughs> Pump division. Those brakes, real he quick. He ain't my Daddy. Let's make that straight. I don't know. We can record this real quick. You can my play that back a couple seconds. You said my Daddy's name my, is Wayne. You know, Daddy. You my know, Daddy's that? name is Wayne. But I'll bro. tell you what. <laughs> John Jones is Dominic Reyes' daddy. You're like Dom. John Jones is Daniel Cormier's daddy. I'm just saying, John Jones is out here fathering all kinds of people. <laughs> Clearly, he's like, "Can you be my stepdaddy?" <laughs> what do you say when Pulling you meet on a, his leg? You know, like, what do you say when you meet a nice man? Are you my daddy? <laughs> Are you my dad? <laughs> okay, so I just want to make it clear: Dude. I only have one father. All right, oh, his this name is, is Wayne. Um, <laughs> But but with that being said, no, he's definitely daddy of that division, and he had the belt for so long. It's kind of hard to argue that. So, I mean, it's kind of like when he vacated the belt, it was kind of like, you guys can have that little toy, man. I done been there, done that. But we all know, if he went back down, he'd grab it. He'd beat John in, in probably spectacular fashion. Yeah, yeah, I think so, especially pick him apart from the outside. and uh, Just goes to show you the greatness, man, of John Jones. This is not respected. Dude. No, he would win that fight. I I wholeheartedly believe, but like he doesn't have a, a fight lined up in heavyweight. 
So you still have to wait for you still have to wait for um, Brock. No, no, no. Well, who's the heavyweight fight that's uh, they just got announced? God, why am I drawing a blank here? What was the big fight? Well, who's the heavyweight champ right now? Stipe. Stipe versus Nungano. Here we go. Thank yes. you, man. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> it's just one of those days. I was just drawing a blank. But yeah, Stipe versus Nungano, that's still going to happen. Like, that, it, John Jones is not going to leapfrog anybody there. And there's no other big fights in heavyweight just yet it's until that fight happens. There's a lot of potential. There's nothing yeah. set in stone. Yeah, honestly... Um, you know, I'm I'm thankful John Jones is doing what he's doing. He went up, to, well, he's going up to heavyweight. Yeah, it's great for the sport. It's great for the divisions. It's great for everything. Um, I'm just looking at it literally from the aspect of okay, if he were to go back down and grab his belt, I would be annoyed because it's almost like it's almost like when you're a child, right? Okay, let's just say you're a sibling, right? Yeah, you you're a five year old and you have a two year old. Okay, and the five year old's like. Okay, yeah, you could go play with that to the two-year-old. And then the two-year-old goes and steps aside, and they play with that. And then the five-year-old comes back and is like, this was mine. I'm taking it back. And then the two-year-old's well, like, well, yeah, but you said I could play with it, and it's mine and now. And then they go at it and see who's the best. And you already know the five-year-old's going to lay the hands. <laughs> Because a five year old, I've been around the block several times. I'm just saying. I love man. that you compare Barry John Jones to a five year old. <laughs> Are just, you smarter than this fifth reference? Grader? Was very close. This reference was very close to home. I'm sure my fiance would be like, "I know exactly what he's talking about." <laughs> but you know, I'm just saying in comparison to a scenario like that, like, oh, you know, you can have that toy. Would you guys be mad if I took it back? Yeah, bro, I'd be a little mad. I'd be a little <laughs> mad. I'd be a little mad. I'd watch and I, I'd be rooting for you. I'd yeah. be a little mad. Yeah, I mean, well, clearly, that's if he goes back, that's the next fight. But, I mean, we'll see. Because he doesn't have a fight in, John, in uh, heavyweight yet, so. John Jones is looking at all these options around him like. Ooh. Oh, dude, he has so it. many options. He's like well, a free agent in, you know, in yeah. the NFL, you know. And he's like number one draft pick, you know, free agent. And everybody's looking at him like, okay, I want to fight you. I want you. I want you. And he's like, man, what do I do? Well, now, good good segue because talking about NFL and in the last episode, we were talking about the EA Sports curse. That got broken. Bro. That got broken. Man, <laughs> this so this main event. So Adesanya versus Costa. And that's funny, too, because we had really made it a point, too. Yeah. Well, we're like, hey, is this going to be an issue? Is the, is the EA curse real? I said, I said, no. <laughs> Adesanya and the year 2020 said, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna change up all kinds of things. Yeah, dude. Uh, no, so it's not real anymore. That thing is broken. It's done for. Yeah, 2020. Man, EA Sports look got at corner. this, dude. Okay, so let's get into the fight a little bit because I just wanted to say, and you could ask, you could ask my brother in law. I called it, man. I said it was gonna be a, a, a knockout in the second round with yeah. TKO knockout one in the same. Uh, I honestly seen. I seen it happening that way from the get go. Those first three leg kicks, man, they just disabled um, Acosta. He did not know how he was going to proceed with his game plan, and from there, it was shut down. It well, was almost like stage fright. Yeah, that was one of the scenarios, and the other one was like either Costa is going to go in there, blitz him, and go all out, or Adesanya is going to pick him apart from the outside. And that's—I mean, those are the only two scenarios that could have happened. Right. And Adesanya picked him. We're talking, yeah. Pick leg, dude. How many times did he landed that leg kick in the first round? Oh, it had to be like five, six times. It was like so flush, man. Dude, did you see the welt that he was already building up? And that was after the first round. That was just and what was funny too is you could tell the difference between the cupping that he had on his legs and the actual kicks from Adesanya. Ooh. You could see that you could distinguish the difference. And I was like, wow, this yeah. is this is getting really. Bad, yeah, like and, really bad. But the thing is, uh, I was saying I was putting a poker po- poker face, like, "Oh, come on, you want to hit me in my leg? Come on, do it again, do it again." Oh, I want, come on, let's do something. And I'm like, "Dude, hold yeah, on. if you're winning the fight, you shouldn't like, dude. He was showboating like if he was winning. Yeah, man, he was like dancing. He was just trying to look cool out there. And the sad thing it was, it was like, are you really that focused on the perception of like that instead of who you are as a fighter because dude you could have you could have been much more aggressive and gave Adesanya a much more difficult time even on a hurt leg switch your stance and then just jab into it something you well, don't switch it up a little bit but you were literally shut down man it was just like you were too worried about dude, showboating not only that all right so he got the leg kicks you're telling me hold up how many times he got let's say let's say 10 times you're telling me you can't time that you can't like all right he's going to kick i'm going to he wasn't I'm even trying to check him 
Dude, and then, but he had one split here. I don't know. I don't remember if it was the first round or in the second round where he Adesanya was up almost close up against the cage. And I'm like, dude, you had a chance to throw something, something, something. Nothing was there. Nothing. Didn't even throw a punch. And I'm like, what was going on? We were expecting a fight of the year. We we're expecting a brawl. Like, I mean, dude, this is this is a testament to um, uh, was it Romero? Yes, dude. He put up. I mean, well, granted, he was just standing there as well. And I thought Paul Costa was going to do more, but like, I mean, Romero landed a punch that kind of like you know rocked out of Sanya and kind of. It was Asanya. so funny because when Costa was kind of froze, out of Sanya straight up looked at him and said Romero. And, yeah, and then, and then Costa started doing this, and I'm like, oh my god, bro, they're putting on a show for these people. Like yeah. this is, this was actually kind of upsetting because okay, I didn't have a problem with Adesanya saying Romero because it literally was a spitting image. But what what I had a problem with was Acosta. Like, okay, that's the time to be like, I'm insulted, bro. Like, no, yeah. I'm gonna do, I'm yeah. gonna do something. But no, it was just more like he played into. He started doing like the the Romero thing, and well, I'm like, not only that, I'm like, hold up, I'm surprised you didn't even shoot. You were talking about so much smack, like, oh hey, I have black belt. Yeah, you you blue belt. You, oh no, he was like, you're white belt. I got you. Yeah, your white, white belt. belt, and throws it on. And it, it was funny because uh, uh, during the I forgot what it was. I think it was a, during a press conference. Um, I decided to put on a white belt. Like, look at that, right? I was like, oh. Dude, a white belt just beat a black belt so Honestly, fast. Honestly, I felt like if it went down to the ground, dude, Adesanya would still win there too. I feel dude. like just this guy is such a solid, a solid champion in yeah. that division. Uh, the only person I think that potentially gave him a hard time was Gaslam and Whitaker, and they both got knocked out. Yeah. Uh, well, Gaslam rocked, and I rewatched that fight before this, and I was like, dude. Yeah, Kevin Gaslam gave him the hardest fight. I think, yeah. uh, not dropped, but rocked. Yeah, he did. Uh, Adesanya about three times in that fight. Yeah, he hurt him. And he was wobbled. There was a leg kick that came out of nowhere. I'm like, dude, I mean, you know, Kevin Gaslam is like, I mean, I'm just saying, he's probably like 5'6", five, 5'7", five, maybe. I haven't looked it up, but. But let's just, uh, let's just say he's uh, sh- way shorter than Not Adesanya. that we have a problem with anybody who's 5'6". Oh, you know what? You know what? No, because Adesanya is what, 5'6", six something, 6'4"? Six, 6'3"? Six, six, three. Three. So it might be Kevin Gaston's maybe five ten maybe gotta be gotta be somewhere around there. Anyways, he lands a kick on on Kevin, on uh, Adesanya's head and I'm like and wobbles him wobbles him. So I'm like, all right, maybe maybe there's gonna be a potential chance for Costa to land a punch and Costa might be the every puncher and it might be way more entertaining. Nope, nothing. Nope, not even that. Now now if we can though, I do want to say I want to give props to Adesanya because he did not fight a scared fight. He fought, oh. a, he fought a very technical fight. Yeah. He fought a very point-styled fight. He went in there. He made sure to get his points. He was in and out. He did not stay in the pocket. Kept range. He made yeah. sure to tag, hit those um, jab shots when they, were, when they were there. And he wasn't expending too much energy. Nope. It felt like he was just literally just, just, playing, just playing a game. It was just peace, peace, Dude, peace, peace. I loved that his walkout. That question mark kick, oh, my God, bro. Dude, almost landed. If that would have landed. That would have been night-night. Night, night, bro. You got to knock the beep, beep. Out. <laughs> and then he, that nice head kick that he had with the left leg, man. Oh, yeah. It, gra- it, it cut him open. It grazed, but it, it was enough to cut him open. And as I'm soon as I glad- saw the blood, I was like, yes. Yeah, because I was thinking, I was like, all right, this is finally, Kosa's getting pissed. He's going to move think. forward, you would think. And then um, I decided to just lands. Uh, where I mean, it looked like it was a knuckle. Yeah. A knuckle barely grazed Kosa's head. And he dropped like a fly. I was like, what is going on? And Precision. Then a, <laughs> and then, obviously, you know, Adesanya's on top of him, landing elbows, punching, we're do, landing bombs. And then uh, Costa turns around and then gets uh, owned by Adesanya. We don't have that photo, but you can look it up on Instagram yeah, he gets real quick. owned. We'll call it owned, boy. Yeah. Well, post-fight, we had uh, Adesanya saying <laughs> that he's uh, – go back to the last slide. Excuse so – um, uh, Adesanya says, I'm fresh. I can go next weekend. I can go any time. Which and is true. He didn't take any type of damage in that fight. Well, man. Uh, let's let's take that back. So he had a big sore knuckle. I think he put, he's good for like another, I think by the end of October. He's probably take for that. sure. But he had a huge swollen knuckle at the press conference. So Yeah, but that, I mean, in my eyes, I'm thinking if damage, I'm thinking, what's your eye looking like? You know, did you bust your lip open? How's that nose? Did you break it? Um, Any broken bones? How's the foot? Is it bruised? Yeah. And honestly, yeah, no serious damage. But I mean, I mean, if you're gonna fight, I mean, you just need to heal up 
the swelling. Right. That's it. Right. You know, so I think they have a medical requirement to be yeah. a certain amount. And right. then this was his hundredth win and dude, a wow, hundredth win in combat sports career. Yeah. Seventy five to uh seventy five wins, six losses, I believe, in kickboxing record, memory record twenty and zero, boxing record five and one. This guy's a stud, man. He's Dude. been around the game for a long time. Although he looks young, he's really oh, he is uh, a young season. Too. He is. He's thirty-one, but he's a seasoned vet. You know, yeah. he's been around the game, so he's still fresh, man. He's got a lot of life left in this uh, in this sport, man. Yeah. Um. Or before we go into the call outs and everything, did you see what was going on with his right right nipple? You know, I try not to look too much in that area of anybody. Yeah, well, well, yeah, obviously, but like I, I know that was called. <laughs> that was a question that was called out on no, the, yeah, no, the post fight conference. I'm just yeah, bringing that so up. So there was a concern um, that there may be some sort of substance abuse or some sort of enhancement that yeah. um, Adesanya may or may not have done. I don't think that's necessarily it. Um, I'm thinking more along the lines of like a staff issue. Maybe there was a um, piece of cartilage. That, I don't know, man. I'm just so, pulling. I'm reaching right now, but I, you know. So there's a channel on YouTube, and I forgot this guy, but he's like the MMA doctor, and he talks about fights and what certain things happen. I think he had a comment like on the Joker movie about how when Joaquin Phoenix got so skinny. Anyways, well, he was talking about how to sign his right uh, peck pictorial and he, he said there was no way that's a, a tearing ligament so he's like usually that's something when it's sagging like that it's a fatty tissues and i'm not i don't know i'm not a doctor i don't know the actual names of this he was throwing out big names I was like well hold up i have a hard time naming things so yeah. um uh yeah he said uh it potentially Sorry, potentially guys. um it could be just from fighting. It could be just um, just fatty tissue collected from there from fighting. It doesn't necessarily have to be from a performance enhancing drug because it's like that a, was uh, cauliflower ear, kind of, kind of like that, but um, wasn't a torn uh, ligament in his chest or nothing like that. So um, it was cool listening from his perspective. If I could find it, I'll link it down in the description below. But um, I thought that was just like a, uh, it was cool seeing a doctor's perspective seeing right. saying that. So yeah, it's nice um, to get a little medical perspective. Yeah, and he said, you know, that's common with fighters. You know, there's going to have certain things that are going to you know break down. I guess you would say so. Because um, immediately the MMA world was saying, oh, PEDs. He's this chest is kind of perking up right now. You know, haters going to hate, bro. They don't want to see us. Yeah, win, you know what I'm saying. They so, don't want to see the champs out here thriving. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm glad we finally talked about that because I was like, when he was walking out, I was like, hold on, there's something, what's going on? And then yeah, I didn't see that until after the fight. And then I was like, well, that's a little interesting. But I. Yeah. Because, oh, dude, it was, that was a big topic on social media. I was like, oh, he's. I'm not so familiar with the abuse of enhancement drugs. I don't really know uh, causes, effects, you know, what they look like, th- those types of things, because I haven't really, you know, Given it much attention. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, you know, it was interesting to see like, oh, you, when you see something's wrong or off on a fighter, it does lead to speculation and guesses. Yeah. And I think this was nice to have because it leads into, oh, you know, did he have a little help to beat Costa or this and that? It just, it, it's a nice storyline to go with Adesanya because he's undefeated. He's, he's so taken dominant. out all these contenders. He's so dominant, right? He's going to be here for such yeah. a long time. So, you know, those things are going to happen. Let's get him done. Let's get him out of the way. Yeah. And what the doctor also mentioned, too, if you are on performance enhancing drugs, it's not like specifically one pectoral is going to grow bigger than the other. Because if you have estrogen running through your body, if you let's say a boost of testosterone or whatever you have, it's going to create a boost of estrogen. So, brief at estrogen, you're going to have your pectorals kind of, you know, getting filled up with fatty tissues a little bit yeah. more. And the body so, has an ability to to keep things s- almost symmet- sy- symmetrical. Exactly. And that's what the doctor said, where it was like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be so rare that one pectoral would just ha- take be taking all that. So, I was like, mm-hmm. all right. That kind of a like, all right, you know, I'm listening to a doctor now. You know, it's not uh, not, not uh, us the speculating. Guy on Twitter. Like, oh, he's cheating, bro. Look at that. <laughs> look, look at his boobs. <laughs> uh, like, so, yeah, because you know, one big left titty is gonna <laughs> it's gonna give you what you need to beat out to beat uh, Costa. Yeah. Well, and so after the fight, so many people were start calling him out, and uh, we have the other guy who's on a terror. And oh, dude, I'm I, I'm I'm always gonna mess this up, man. Comes at comes at. Comes out. Comes out. Let's just say it fast. Comes out. Comes out, Chiamas. Yeah, he says, give me the skinny guy with the wolf emoji. Oh. 
Now, do you think that's a little too early too soon for him? Nope. You want to give him that already? Who's Damian Maya? Ah, oh, dude. All yeah. right, so this is my this is my outlook, okay? Realistically, he's Adesanya said he would fight Cannoneer if Cannoneer beats Robert Whitaker. In a devastating fashion, though, like in a, in a performance, you know. I like, think even then, it, he's, he becomes the number one contender. Yeah. I don't think there's anybody else that you can make that fight with. Even if he's not, you can make the champ versus number three. You can get it done. Well, he's already ran through pretty much everybody except for Cannoneer. That's that's what I mean. So that's yeah. the fight to make. Um, If you don't make that fight, then... That is the fight to make because you can have that. You can, from what this guy did, when you make a bold move like book this guy two times back to back, you know, you put him against these guys that he's expected to beat, but he does it in like such an amazing fashion. I mean, yeah, you might want to keep him brewing in the pot a little bit to keep that hype going, but you can. You can okay. So let's have Cannoneer fight Adesanya. Of course, Adesanya is going to win. Then you throw Kamza in there and and get it done. Yeah, well, he's going to run through Damian Maya in a, in a spectacular fashion, man. Yeah, I, I don't want to. He's going to hurt him. I yeah. feel bad for Damian Maya. I don't want to see the Damian Maya fight. I would rather watch yeah. Cannoneer and see what he can do. Granny, I I mean, we're probably favoring him uh, Adesanya right now because he just beat Kos in a dev- devastating fashion, but. Comes yeah, up versus comes up. Darren Till. Yeah, I would like to see that. And then from there, that could be like a... Uh, the feeler who would get out of Sanya? Boom. There you go, Sean Shelby. There you go, Sean Shelby. Take a break. <laughs> well, continuing the post-fight call-outs, John <sighs> Jones. I'm going to leave this up to you because you're John Jones. John Jones' daddy That's over here. That's my dog. <laughs> That's daddy. That's daddy. That's daddy. You know what? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, John Jones tweeted, you've stepped into the ring over 100 times now, and you're still not ready? You have a youth advantage and like four times the fighting experience. The truth is, you're already my... If it it was there, I would have said it. (laughs) You love being undefeated, and you've seen what's happened to everybody else. It raises your stock to mention my name. You're aware of this. You don't want real confrontation with me. I'm not just going to stand there and kickbox with you. I've been preparing for heavyweights. Right around now, I would literally tear one of your arms off. This makes me want to see that fight even more, dude. Yeah. Please, please. Uh, 2021, you got to get that fight done, man. You got to get that fight done. Raider Stadium. John Jones, Adesanya. Dude, that thing would sell out. And you can try. I mean. I think the the biggest question is just. At what weight? Do they meet in the middle at 205? Yeah, it would Just, have to be. It would have to be at 205. It have to be. Because at heavyweight, dude, John Jones would have a massive advantage. So remember massive. When, you remember when John Jones was bodybuilding for a little bit? Ooh. Do you remember how, bro? <laughs> you remember? He put this guy, Paul Costa, to shame, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm just being a hype man now. But he definitely was out here <laughs> looking big, bro. John Jones can put on the, the muscle. Yeah, so... Yeah, it would have to be 205. And, uh, dude, International Fight Week, you put Connor, Nate Diaz on the undercard. Mm. Or, I mean, I mean, you could put anything on the undercard. Oh, you, or, uh, what do you call uh, William uh, Zang versus Rose on the other? John oh, Whaley, Rose Nama oh, Yunus. Yeah, yeah. You why, can why have. You think Zang? Who's because, Zang? I think you're just combining both, bro. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zang, anyway. Zang Whaley. Zhang Wang Lee, there we go. Maybe I say Zhang. I don't know. We got we to gotta work um, on this, bro. <laughs> we need 30 minutes of dedicated time prior to the podcast. Like, this is how saying, you say their names, of guys. I'm saying the names 12 times. That way it comes out yeah, easy. Yeah, we got to get a bell, dude. <laughs> can, we get, yeah. can, can we put a freaking bell on here? So yeah, seriously, guys. <laughs> somebody help us out here. Dude, uh, anyways, I would love to see that. International Fight Week 2021. Make it happen. Please. I've been saving money. Take my money, UFC. <laughs> Take my wallet. <laughs> Serious. Just Dude. give me some good fights. So it looks what? like here, um, after the fight, after uh, Paul Acosta got owned, he responded on Twitter, and he said this. Well, he saw what happened to him after yeah. he was getting up. And if you have not seen it, look on Instagram. It's all over Instagram. I'm pretty sure there's memes. There's probably a remix by now. Probably Woodley's probably throwing some lyrics to it. I don't yeah. know. But <laughs> 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 so he saw himself in a uh, downward dog position or, you know, on his knees, bent over. Dang, and I sounds like you've read a Karma Sutra book or something. <laughs> 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 downward so, dog. But <laughs> so downward. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Adesanya was behind him and gave him a little, you know, give him a little love tap, and uh, you can use your imagination. Give him a little oomph, you know. Give him a little oomph, and uh, do that. Dude, bounce check a wow, <laughs> a little bounce check a wow, wow. And dude, there was a, already a video of him doing that. It was going back and forth. Back oh and yeah, forth. you just run it on a loop, bro. And dude, literally, it was on a loop. this guy is is uh put a little bow chicka wow on that it. yeah and uh <laughs> dude, straight by that's the n- biggest meme of 2020 dude and costa saw this and so he says adesanya is human trash this has this has become a grave a grave situation <laughs> i saw his disgusting action after the fight and i will not stop until i have my revenge dana white make this rematch happen Dislike. That's was and this was style bender saying this. I just <laughs> dislike. I can stop you again. <laughs> Laughing emoji, dude. Oh my god, I, it's this, true, dude. I can't believe Coast is actually fine or wanting a rematch. I mean, dude, you didn't even throw a punch. Of course, he wants a rematch because it makes him look like like he could have done something a little better. Yeah. But if we're being honest here, ten out of ten times, Adesanya's going to do that. He's well, going to break you down. He's going to stop you. But dude, you did not do nothing in this first fight for to argue a rematch. I'm like, dude, you have to now. You now you have to be everybody in line to get that rematch. Especially with the amount of hype that Dana White had yeah. prior to this fight. Calling it, you know, fight of the year. Yeah. Saying it's going to have all these expectations. And then the result was what it was. Dana White is not going to, you know, be in your corner Mm -mm. in regards to giving you an immediate rematch. Now, you're going to have to probably fight two, three times again. I would say probably more because, I mean, you have to... Costa has to knock out his opponents devastated fashion like he was doing to even say, like, all right, man, he... Something and he was trying to say there was an injury or an injury or something. He's like, no excuses. Something went happen happened in the camp. (laughs) So I mean, is that true? I doubt it. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, and and truthfully, I don't think no one wants to see that rematch until you have to show that you are putting people away, right, left and right, dude. You have to go back in the the circle and uh, in the pool. And knock out everybody else, and making making sure you're undeniable that that contender again. Start again at the top ten. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's uh, yeah. I don't even get started that fight. That fight pissed me off, man. God damn you, Paulo Costa. God, dude, damn we you. thought we thought it was gonna be better, but anyways, well, I mean, it just shows Alexander is that much better. <laughs> I don't know. We'll just see. for a little NFL reference, uh, for for the, everybody who watches who likes football, Herm Edwards. They were who we thought they were. <laughs> and that's exactly who I thought Acosta was going to be. Shut down, shelter, <laughs> Romero. <laughs> Damn, dude. All well, right, man. Enough of that nonsense because you know what? 10 out of 10 times it's going to happen again just like that. Yeah. So let's get on to a little bit, something a little more exciting. Which are the fights Ooh, this week? This week. And so we're just going to go right with the UFC one. Um man. Holly Holm versus Aldana, man. I'm super stoked for this one. This is going to be a striking clinic, guys. Ooh, and th- it was just cool, cool because, you know, Holly Holm is a uh, former kickboxer. Aldana was, um, you know, boxing mainly because if you come out of Mexico, you're straight boxing. Let's be real. right. Right. And um, shout out to Jackson Wing. Holly Holm fights out of the same training camp um, as John Jones. So, you know, champion stuff goes on. Championship stuff goes on over there. She's a former champion herself. Tough division. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is a chance for her to put on that striking clinic, um, fight for her, you know, her uh, shot for the number one, you know, contender spot again. Let's see what she can do. Personally, I'm going with Aldana this fight, early fight prediction. I'm taking Aldana, and I'm probably, I'm saying it's probably going to go down in probably the second or the third. Um, I would probably say. Second round. I don't think he's going to pass second round. I'm going for Aldana as well. Yeah. And not saying Holly Holm can't win. Obviously, she's, she got, win. she's got the leg kick. She could probably land a She could a win kick. by vicious, you know, vicious style, but oh. I don't see it happening. But I'm super biased. I'm going with uh, Aldana. You know, Guadalajara all Guadalajara, day. Raza, compa. You already know, man. You we're are. a little biased over here, so we're going to go <laughs> with the fam. Yeah. And I like Holly Holm. But I have nothing against her. I'm just saying yep. I'm going with Aldana. <laughs> I think she's... She's in a position where she's one of those stepping stones, unfortunately. Holly Holm is? Yes, yeah. where, you know, one, you know, once again, the name carries the weight. Former, you know, former champion has been a champion in kickboxing. She has, she's not an easy out, but she's an out. You know, that's how I'm looking at it. Um, unfortunately, well, those divisions are just not quite as, as stacked as you would like them to be. So, 
You well, want some contenders to get up there, and I think that's what they're doing is they're, now, they're getting these contenders up. Yeah, she was on a, what was it, four, four fight losing streak after Rousey? Some big L's. Big L's, and she got KO'd by Amanda Nunez. And, oh, man, I didn't even... I didn't even put that in the current events. Congratulations, Amanda Yus, on having your baby. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Champ, champ. Champ, champ. I forgot what the baby's called, but, you know, baby's name. <laughs> yeah. The baby is named something, and we're happy for her. <laughs> yeah. So And uh, for her wife. Yes. And, um, yeah, so this fight, dude, I'm excited because this is going to be a striking match. And these and I, every fight I've seen from a girl has always been, like, pretty exciting. They always bring it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, uh, Especially in the striking departments. Like, if there's two strikers, oh, they're going to go at it. Yeah. So, yeah, these I'm chicks, excited. These chicks ain't afraid to bleed, bro. No. I'm they, surprised this is not on, like, on a pay-per-view because this is, this is pay-per-view worthy. It is pay-per-view worthy. But they've had a trend this whole year of putting on some good fight nights that they could definitely put on as main events for a pay-per-view. Yeah. So, I'm not complaining at all. No. So, you guys check this out. This is this Saturday, October 3rd. And, uh, yeah, we can't wait. This is going to be on Fight Island. So, uh, dude. I hope it's just one of those fights where they're like, just let me bang, bro. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It's going to be a striking clinic I just want to bang, bro. Boxer versus kickboxer. This is going to be sick, dude. Striking clinic, guys. Oh. Okay. Well, let's get right to it. The moment you guys have been waiting for. Oh, my goodness. The winner of the art giveaway. So, my co-host is going to uh, do the screen record. Yep. Yeah. So, right now, what I'm doing here is just setting it up on the screen, guys. That way, we can have it playing. So that way you guys can see our reaction live. Exactly. No cheating. We're going to actually record once we hit play all the names. Everyone that hit uh, commented done and followed us, specifically followed us on a Ringside Beer uh, you know, show on YouTube. Um, we're going to do that right now. Yes, guys. So, so you're going to hit record? Yes, sir. All right. Woo! Okay. All right. Ready? Here we go. All right. Let's do it. All right, hit start. All right, guys, best of luck to everybody. Here we go. Everyone's name's going. Look at all those names, man. Everybody at, participated. There we go. Who we got? We oh, got. Yanni Hernandez. I, oh. I know him very personally. Um, I could actually take it to him pretty soon, but he's going to have to wait because we got to make the announcement. Yeah. But, wow, man, congratulations, Yanni. I'm Yanni glad you Hernandez. won this, man. There we go, man. And thank you, everyone, who participated. We had uh, 12 total participants yeah, in this one did. so uh, we're just we're excited we're going to continue the art giveaway so yeah, guys, please guys is... keep in tune we're going to have another you know comment section below where you can enter that name and we're going to the next one will be uh khabib Ver and uh gaichi so we're both going to work on it this week and on the next episode you guys will see the paintings and you guys will be uh can enter to win that one as well yeah right? guys man super excited can't wait well i do wish you guys the best thank you once again for tuning in mm -hmm. um on that note. On that note, guys. Be remember, ringside. Be ringside, guys. All right. Later, guys.